Hi, I'm Chip Hamlin. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this is... Tackle, Tackle Talk, Talk with Chip, Chip and Earl. Earl. Well, that was a bit of a doozy. How you doing today, Chip? Earl, I'm better than butter toast. That's How about you, t- Earl? How's your, how's your day been I so was, far? I was just about to say that that's... Great to hear that you're doing very well. Thanks. That means a lot to me. We're out I here. Too am I'm doing sorry. very, very well. That's good to hear. We're out here in uh, New York, fishing here for the maybe the second or third time. I haven't been here too often. Um, Where are we fishing today, Chip? Well. Uh, New York, that's what I said. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, what I'm going to be fishing for. I don't, I don't know the name. It's just a, just a nameless old lake in, in New York. I got to remember how to. Um, there we go. There um, we go. What do we got here? We're using a, a bass jig right now. I'm not sure that that's the best lure to use in this kind of situation. I think I want to start out with uh, a good red worm. What do you think about that? To do red that. worm. Sorry, go ahead. Red worms sound really great. I agree. We're gonna have to put. Uh, oh dear. Put. Uh, well, you know, I think we gotta switch them to the old minispin. Oh dear, I gotta switch my rod altogether. My goodness. I haven't been out fishing in a while. I'll be honest. I forget some of the ins and the outs. You know what? Chip, this part. reminds me we go. of a story about there was a time in my life where I would ride a bicycle every day when I was a, a young boy growing up in Pennsylvania. That's good and, exercise. Um, what? That's good exercise. Yes, it is. But getting back to my story, I stopped riding my bike when I grew into my teenager years because I did not think it was necessary and I lost interest. But as I got older, I eventually started riding a bike. And there was, at the time, a concern that I would not remember how to ride my bike. Well, you know what they say, it's like riding a bike. But there's one thing I learned when I got on that bike that day. What's that? That's a great lesson, Earl. Sometimes you can learn something from a thing that you've done a bunch of times before. That's a great point. I hadn't thought about it. What are we fishing for today? Well, I think Chip? I'm going to fish for some crappy and it's and some bass. Okay. Um, feeling awfully forgetful today. Hang, hang on a second. I need to uh, uh, see. Uh, Oh Don't forget the pitch. The pitch is extremely important. I forget exactly how to... Uh, there was a thing. There was a way. That's not what I meant to do. But that's okay. I think what we're going to do now... Just let it sit there. Let's see how the fish is about today. You know, Chip... There's a... Very good chance that on our call line we have a viewer who has a question and he or she would be very interested in asking us and in turn let us answer. Would that be something that you'd like to um, pop 
possibly look into at this time. Well, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay. Okay. Let me cast over here okay. by his lilies. So it looks like first on the line we have... I can't read the handwriting. Charlie? Maybe it's Charlie. I'm not 100% sure. Why don't you go ahead and get him on the line? Charlie? What do you have to say, Charlie? You're on with Chip and Earl. What's on your mind? Hi, guys. This is um, Charlie from Topeka, Kansas. Uh, Hi, Charlie. I, I just had a, I had a question for you guys. I, um, I, I live in a nice neighborhood. Uh, I got nice neighbors. I uh, was mowing the lawn the other day, and I, I invited my, my neighbor over for some for dinner, and um, uh, he and his wife, and they came over. I uh, had a, a barbecue set up. I had some some franks and some burgers and some uh, chicken going uh, real good. I'm, everyone says I got the, the best barbecue in the neighborhood. Um, anyways, I, uh, I went to serve uh, my neighbor some food, and uh, he, he told me uh, he's, he's a vegan. What they call a vegan, I don't really understand what it is, but it turns out he doesn't eat any meat or uh, dairy even. And I said, Jim, you big puss, I don't want stuff like that around my children so I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave and he didn't take too kindly to that uh, uh, I mean I thought I did the right thing there but I thought you know I'd ask you guys and uh, see what you thought about that so um, yeah yeah thanks um, thanks for the call yeah, good luck with the fish and I'll, uh, I look forward to hearing your answer well Charlie uh, it's, a, it's a great question and the first thing I want to say is um I'm a big fan of barbecue chicken. So, if you ever invite me over there, you can be sure that I will clean my plate. Lick it clean. But that's a difficult situation. What do you think about it, Earl? Um. Um, uh, vegan is... You have to be... 110 percent respectful oh it's a black crappie it's a black crappie not a bad looking fish it's a, a little speckly a little speckle pattern a yeah. dalmatian fish yeah so that's what they call it yeah down at the old fishing shops that's yeah. you know you got to know the terminology i want to go ahead and release him though he's not very okay. big i'm sending him back but go ahead getting back yeah back to charlie's question you have to be respectful of all walks of life whether people are vegetarian, vegan, or just plain weird, right? You have to, uh, you know, respect, be respectful of, of people's differences. Um, so for you to call him, I can't remember what, exactly what you said, but I you said it was a big puss. Right. You shouldn't call people who are different from you a big puss and ask them to leave. You should be respectful and treat them with friendship and kindness. And I think that's really well said, Earl. Um, Charlie, let me just say... I I feel for you. I think that's a really difficult situation. I forgot to set the hook there. It's lost in thought. It happens sometimes. And, uh, you know, you might be right. I mean, I think Earl's right that you gotta be respectful. Even when people are being just plain weird. Yeah, you know, yeah. but they're your neighbors. And you gotta put up with them, so... You might want to have a vegan option for him next time. Or, what you can do, I've tried this a couple times, if you get a vegetarian or a vegan, you slip a little meat into their food without them knowing. That way they get a taste for it, and eventually, they'll come around. Chip, I have a question for you. What's that, Earl? You said, have a vegan option available for them next time they come over. Yeah. Do you know any vegan options? Uh, 
I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to cast over by the lilies a little bit closer. That might be a little bit better. Sure is foggy out today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of this one time. I was probably young. I was building a I think a snowman. And I had all the pieces in place. I had a big ball at the bottom, a medium sized ball in the middle, and the smallest ball at the top. And I had a hat, a bunch of rocks for the eyes and the buttons, and let's not forget about the carrot for the nose. Did you have the little buttons? Did you say that? Uh, rock. I just used rocks. The rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And Trevor Bistro was, I hate to say, the, we use the word bully, but he was the bully on the block. And this is the most beautiful snowman I've ever, ever made. And Trevor, I think, he, it might have been, he might have just been jealous, I'm not quite sure, but um, he, he said some hurtful things to me about my snowman. And he, I'm trying to remember the story, I believe he knocked it over, which is very hurtful and rude, especially when you put a lot of time and effort into something. It's not particularly caring. And it took a lot of my willpower and strength to handle the situation, and I Looking back, I believe I, I did that. Well, it looks like that uh, fog is burning off a little bit. We got a little sunshine shining through here. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. It's a comfortable 55 degrees right now, i got to be honest. And my flannels, that's about the perfect temperature that I could ever ask for. That's a nice color on you, Chip. Thanks, I like sir. that. Thanks. Oh, here oh, we go. Oh, oh, I'm going to oh, set oh, the hook oh, a little oh, bit. Oh, boy. Fish on chip. Okay. There Fish on go. chip. Pull it in. I think I just yanked him right out of the water pretty oh. much. That's a yellow That's perch. That's a yellow perch. I must keep this fish. That's a Laws fast. stipulate that I have to do it. It's beautiful. Look at him go. A little spry little fella. He's got a nice color to him, doesn't he? You can see why they call him a yellow perch. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a, a little under little fins yellow, there. Little yellow, what would you say, hue? I would say Hugh. That's a good looking fish. Well, that was my last worm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the, uh, what is it, the casting rod. I'm going to have to take the reel off of this one. Go ahead and take it off. Chip, I just have a fact I'm not sure a lot of the viewers at home would know, but if you have, um, a purple worm and you, you're, you're probably wondering why is this worm purple? That's such a thing as a purple worm hmm. but I, I I knew this old angler named Mike mm -hmm. that's and, a good fishing name and he told me that purple worms look brown underwater is that so? so high, hell or high water I Dipped one of those little in worm, purple worms in the water. I looked at it. Sure as hell. And it was brown. It looked brown. And that's the perfect color that fish want to see underwater. They want to see the brown. Yep. You know, brown is a great color. Chip, what do you say we get to another phone call? That's a great idea. It looks like we might have... Technical difficulties here. There's um. It's heading over to the dock. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> My goodness, I'm fighting off a little bit of a cold. I think um, we We've might have a little bit of a technical difficulty here. You've been fighting here. that cold off for a yeah, while. Yeah, I tell you, you know what? I think we're gonna take a quick break, 
And we'll be back in a minute. Sorry about that. Welcome back. Just heading Hi. over to this dock here. I'm gonna do a little jig fishing. I got a little bass jig on the end of this. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna try to catch something a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more difficult with this kind of fishing. Because you gotta, uh, make sure that uh, jig is, um, catching the eye of the fish, you know? What are we fishing for today, Chip? Well, I'm looking for uh, something a little bit bigger, more aggressive. Maybe some uh, pike would be good. Any kind of bass with these kind of jigs. Probably not the perch and the crappie so much. Oh. But it could be a long wait. It's a difficult way to fish here. We got another call. That might be a good time to check it Chip, out. Chip, what do you say we take another phone call? I think we should take another call. Okay. On the phone, we have Charles. Now, if you remember back to our last broadcast, Charles called in earlier. He was a gentleman who worked at a school in the library, but he had a problem with literacy. Oh, yeah, that was a difficult issue. He was illiterate. He couldn't read. And, you know, we told him to just start practicing at night. We're faking it by looking at the pictures. Yes. That. Here we go. Charles, we hope everything is well. What can we do for you today? Hi, Chip. Uh, hi, Earl. Uh, this is Charles. I've Hi. called in before. I was the one with the, um, the illiteracy issue. Uh, you guys did a great job at uh, helping me resolve that, uh, that problem I had. So well, I you. appreciate yeah, that. that. Thank Charles? you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, since that episode of your show has hit the air, um, cats out of the bag, everybody at the school I work at knows that I don't, uh, don't know how to read. So that's a problem I've been dealing with. Uh, a lot of the kids call me, you know, stupid or dumb. I, one kid put a fucking tack on my chair and I sat down and yelped because it hurt, hurt my, my buttock. Uh, what, what should I do now that people know that I'm illiterate because of your show? I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying that. If it wasn't for you, they, they wouldn't know that I'm stupid. Well, Charles, I think um, one of the first things we said last time was that uh, just because you lack the ability to read basic writing doesn't mean that you're stupid or not intelligent. So that's something you should keep in mind. That's right. And just think of how much you know worse it could be. You know, you obviously can walk, you have your health. Um, you have a job. You're able to speak. Um I don't know by, I can't see you, but you're white, and you're male. So I mean, those are all really positive things. Um, you know, how is, I just want to make sure that you are practicing at night, so when they accuse you of not being able to read, you can say, Hey, look, I've made some progress. I can, you know, this is, a, this word is the, or this word is a, you know, start, start with the simple ones, start with the, the basics and, you know, pretty soon you'll be saying, Hey, look, this, I know this word, this word is, you know, Doug, you know, D-U-G. That's a good word. Um, 
I hope we didn't get you into too much of a bath of hot yeah, water. You know, I, I think it's important to us for us to say, you know, it's a little disclaimer for the viewers that uh, when you call in, you know, you, this is a very popular show. A lot of people watch it. So if you're not sure about whether you want to share a particular question, a particular problem you have, you got to think about that before you hit and call in. Now, I know he said he wasn't blaming us. And I appreciate that, Charles, but, uh... That's the best advice if you have that. I guess I'll... Okay. Thanks, I guess, Chip and Earl. Love the show. See you later. I hope Charles calls back with another update we can be sure that he's making progress because we should invite him out fishing with us sometime. You know, I'm having a hard time catching fish today. You caught, um, a yellow perch. I did. Well, you know, when I switched over to that jig, I had high hopes, but, uh... Casting right through those trees, Chip. You gotta be careful there. Yeah, I'm pretty adept at those uh, lose that lure tree casts. I, I can, you know, thread the needle there. I'm pretty good with that, so you don't have to worry. Chip, uh, I'm sorry, that's mine. Uh, Earl, I apologize, Earl. Sometimes my mind, I tell you, you get old and you slip up. Anyways, I feel like I'm in a bit of a funk today, you know? I know exactly what you mean, Earl. I don't know if it was that foggy start, the fact that the fishes ain't biting. Yeah, I think that's an important lesson, you know? Not every day is going to be the best day. That's just a fact. And it's incumbent upon yourself to fight your way through it. And that's what we're going to try to do here. Chip, I don't condone any fighting or violence at all. I think... Violence, if at all possible, can be avoided and should be avoided. Um, you know, th just thinking about violence reminds me of this one time that um, I built a um, beautiful sculpture in the snow and a the bully insulted it, and I attacked him physically. What did you use? Just, just my bare fists. I was young at the at, at that age. I was only 23, 24. That's awfully brave. Well, you know, he was he was a lot younger than me. I think he was probably 11 or 12 at the time. He said, "You know, you're a bit old to be building snowmen, but I stand firm that you're never too." old to build a snowman. I completely agree with that. And that's just rude. There's, he's just condoning. I don't know. He's, he's just a bully. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Chip. I lost my, I lost my, my cool, which isn't, which isn't typical for Earl Prescott. It's, that's a rare. Can I just say, I have never seen you lose your cool ever, honestly. I have a difficult time even picturing it. This was uh, in early days before I had found my true passion in life. Do you know what that passion is, Chip? What is it, Earl? Fishing. I kind of figured you were going to say that. Anyways. You know what? That just picked me up quite a lot. I was feeling a bit of a funk. I was feeling like a, you know, a foggy morning on a lake. And now uh, I feel like the clouds are burning off a little bit, thanks to you, Earl Prescott. So I appreciate that Well, a lot. don't sing my praises. I sent the no. bully Trevor to the hospital. Well, you know, sometimes you got to stick up for yourself, and there isn't any other way to do it. He is still in a coma.
Sorry, I'm fighting that cold still. Do we have a little bit of movement on the bobber there, Chip? Any of the calls you see that or little, something? Little, little bobber yeah, bobbing. Yeah, there's a little, 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 little bops yeah, there. A little bit of a bop. A little bit of a bop there. Oh, 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 oh there oh, we oh, go. Oh, I've oh, set oh, that oh, hook. Oh. I've set it. Whoop. I think, I think we got it. Oh, boy. Common shiner. That's a common shiner. Yeah, very scaly kind of fish. Got kind That's of a beautiful, beautiful little um, oh yes. little fish there. J Haas 17 says, 117 says, Darn, Earl, calm down. <laughs> I think he's ribbing you a little bit there, Earl, because of the uh, the coma of that child you, you uh, caused. Now might be a good time, Chip. To take our last phone call for the day. That's probably a good idea. I have a phone call here from... Actually, I don't have a name. Let's just say Anonymous. Okay, Anonymous. You're on the line. Hi. My husband watches you guys all the time. What is this? What are you doing? Well, um, glad your husband watches religiously, I hope, and, uh, what this is, is this is a couple of men having an intimate bonding session together, talking about life, love, and fishing. Well said, Chip. I can't think of any other way to explain what we are doing, what we do, or what this is. This is a way for ourselves to relax, enjoy the luscious beauty of the outdoors and make peace with I have a question for you sometimes I wonder uh, do you think women can understand this I don't mean to oh. divide by sex or gender, but uh, there's something distinctively masculine about uh, this kind of fishing, you know? I know exactly what you mean, Chip. And I honestly believe that was our first female caller we've had on the show. I think that's correct. So I'm not entirely surprised that it was a negative or well, I don't know. It questioning was, it was a call. inquisitive call I think is what I would say I, I, I sensed a bit of bitterness and uh, I think this uh, is, well, it's an important, important thing we could say here and it's uh, it's important for a man to have something like this like fishing where you can bond and have deep discussions with your male friends but that shouldn't be the only thing you do you certainly don't want to neglect your wife or your children because you're out fishing all the time you know this is kind of like a once a week kind of thing kind of like our version of Sunday morning church other than going to church on Sunday morning Chip, you're absolutely right. You don't want to neglect your children <laughs> yeah. or your wife or your Sorry. family. You want to be there for them. But sometimes it's very healthy to get away from them for a, a while. Because every time I tune into our local news station 
W W G H V. All I see is stories about domestic violence. Turn on the TV. Domestic violence, domestic violence, domestic violence. Every time. Sometimes it's to domestic disputes. And that stems from in Earl Prescott's humble opinion a lack of fishing. If the woman would just be a little bit more well, a little bit more then the man can get out and take his mind off things, get out in nature, do some fishing, and we can cut back on the amount of domestic violence and domestic disputes by 36%. Oh, I think that's so right. I often wonder, how much better a place would the world be if there was just a little bit more fishing? Maybe 36% better. You answer my question. I actually have a question from the viewer. From a viewer, excuse me. He says, what are your guys' opinion? Oh, excuse me, fish on. I'm gonna fling it right out of the water there. What is your opinion? It's a black crappie. Beautiful fish. I could look at these all day. What's your opinion of the police? Well, I have a a neighborhood officer. He's called uh, Officer Shandy. He's a wonderful fella. Keeps our community safe. Stops in every now and then, checks up on us. Sometimes I see him leaving my my home kind of at weird hours when I'm coming home and only my wife's there. He's a good guy. I've always, Chip, I've told you this, I've always wanted to be a police officer. I think I'd be very good at it. I have great respect for police officers. Their job is far from easy. And I understand that there's stress involved. Um, would I ever want to be a police officer? The answer is no. I don't think I've ever wanted to be a police officer. You know, talking about all the stress of being a police officer makes me think we should head down to the station sometime and uh, try to explain to them the benefits of having a mandatory fishing program for the officers. It would give them a time to, to bond with each other, develop trust, and also, as you said before, to blow off steam. Get the stress of the world off their shoulders for a little bit, you know? The weight of the world. Are those, uh, insects over there? I think they're a variety of... Dragonfly? They're or really possibly, active. Possibly gnats. Those would be some large gnats. I sure hope that's not what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and make a, I'm gonna cast in these reeds. I wanna get it. That's where I want it. I'm gonna let it sit here. And by golly, we're gonna get ourselves one good fish before we go. Chip, we've got a question here from one of our viewers. Chip, what is the biggest fish you've ever caught? Well, I tell you, I, uh, I went on a carp fishing tour once. Out in Michigan, actually. I got to 
the Great Lakes over there, and they got a couple of their spots in the woods, and, uh, I got myself a, um, it wasn't a, a, a common, it was, um, oh, I forget the name of them. Anyways, they can get to be, uh, 20, 30 pounds, maybe three feet wide. They're pretty ugly things. They got these little suckers for lips, like they just scoop up the, uh, you know, the, the bottom, the stuff on the bottom of the lake. Bottom there. What do you call that stuff? Algae. I'm not sure. You can uh, throw bread or just about anything on your line. They'll scoop it up. But it was uh, it was p- pretty. Uh, I think uh, the biggest one, 32 pounds, Lake Michigan. 32 pounds. 32 pounds. Holy moly! That's like a a dog, a small dog. Hey Chip. Yeah. What's that? Huh? Holy mackerel. <laughs> That's a fish joke. Or I swear. Holy mackerel. I'm gonna scare the fishes away because <laughs> you're making me laugh over here. Oh, Chip, I apologize. I just couldn't help Earl, myself. You, I'm doubled over now. <laughs> How am I supposed to keep a steady life? We're scaring away the fishes. I know. Sometimes, man, you and I, we, we get into some trouble sometimes, you and I. We are, it's always we good are, to have a good joke. We are something else. That was Will said. Well, you know what? Uh, I think today just isn't my day when it comes to fishing here in New York. I, I think I, I haven't quite struck out, but we didn't get the, uh, you know, the big, the big Kahuna that we wanted. So I think we might just That's okay. go ahead and, and wrap it up. What do you think, girl? I think that sounds like a good idea, Chip. I've got to get to Sunday church. I'll be right there behind you. So anyways, I want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in. Thank you for uh, Charles and Charlie. Good luck with the literacy issue. Look forward to hearing from you again. And uh, for all the viewers watching at home, we greatly appreciate it. I've been Chip Hamlet. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this has been Tackle Talk with Chip and Earl. So long.